Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 back with another video. This time I was contacted by Banggood and they wanted to send me something and they said, you know, pick something out that you um, you would like to play around with. And I picked two things out. Uh, another video is incoming later in the future for the second item. That's going to take a little while because that involves me 3D printing lots of things and testing um, something out. So that's going to be a little bit delayed. This one is what I've spent most of my time on, my free time recently. I'd shown a couple pictures of these uh, these EPDs, these electrophoretic displays, from basically known as um, e-ink or e-paper displays. And this one's not even plugged into anything, and it's retaining its image. This is a three-color one, so it does red, black, and white. And I posted lots of pictures of this little display. This is, I believe, 212 by 104 uh, pixels tall. And you can set every pixel independently to black, white, or red. And the refresh time on this guy is somewhere along the lines of um, like 15 to 20 seconds. So it's not very quick, but once you're done refreshing, you can actually shut the display off and it'll retain the image and consume pretty much no power. <laughs> uh, so yeah, anyway, this I bought years ago and I did a video years ago, but uh, I basically programmed from more or less from scratch, uh, my own custom library. I just borrowed some initialization code uh, from WaveShare's website uh, to get the display initialized properly. Anyway, so I programmed that, um, a library for that display, and so I wanted to, to, to get something much higher resolution. And so I, I went on Banggood's website and I saw they have these 4.2 inch displays. And I remember when these first came out, they were like 50 or 60 bucks. They've dropped to about like 30 bucks now, which is insane. Anyway, this is a 4.2 inch diagonal, uh, 400 pixel by 300 pixel display. This is actually pretty high resolution uh, given the size and it looks absolutely fantastic. Now this is only black and white. They do sell a version that's um, that has red or yellow in addition to black and white. Uh, those are, I, I don't even think they're much more expensive. They might be like a dollar more or something. But anyway, um, this is what they had in stock, so I opted for this guy. And we are going to actually step through this, and um, this is going to show you how much um, current and you know power uh, the display is using while it's updating, and then this will give you an idea of how fast the refresh uh, update time for this display is, as well as some of the functionality on the, um, the library that I wrote. Um, in order to render images and text and whatnot to the display. So anyway, what's controlling this currently, the library uses nothing specific uh, to the processor. So you basically, as long as you have GPIO, uh, it'll work. <laughs> it doesn't even need to be fast. So I have it running on an ATmega 32U4, uh, just for ease of programming directly over USB. But this will run off of pretty much anything because uh, I'm bit banging SPI, so I don't need any specialized uh, SPI hardware. And um, the only thing is the font, um, all the font and images are stored in flash and it consumes quite a bit of memory. So I think I'm using about half of the available flash on this chip, which is, I believe it's like 32K of flash. And um, RAM consumption isn't too bad. Uh, I am doing partial display buffering in order to uh, write to the display uh, basically on a line by line basis. Uh, so I write, you know, a, a row either vertically or horizontally, you'll see in a second. But anyway, uh, so pretty much, you know, relatively low end processors, even like a 328P should easily run this library. And I'm currently adapting it to add more functionality such as external flash chips so that you can do like full bitmaps and whatnot. Anyway, without further ado, I guess I'll let this run its course and um, put some nice background music in there and uh, let you guys enjoy, uh, you know, the display rendering and whatnot. So let's commence.
Okay, and it's just pretty much going to continue from now. It just loops. But anyway, uh, things to mention. So I'm not actually putting this processor to sleep. It's sitting there the whole time and it's continuing. It's uh, being awake. So actually most of the power that you're seeing, that 20 milliamp constant draw, is actually the processor because I am actually switching off the supply voltage to the EPD. So that's actually drawing no current in between writes. Um, and... I make a big deal of writing horizontally and vertically. Uh, it doesn't seem like it would be difficult, but it actually is uh, because the way that this display uh, is set up, you write um, eight pixels vertically and it goes. So if you start in this corner, it writes down. So it's really easy to write this and vertical bit, but to write the horizontal text, you actually have to uh, write it in kind of eight by eight segment blocks. Otherwise, the text would just come out vertically. Uh, so I actually have to implement a, um, a like a row buffer and basically take my font data, which is all stored vertically, um, and rotate it, basically do a matrix transform in software. And I iteratively do that for each kind of tile, eight by eight tile, and then I write that to the, the display. So it does require somewhat more processing power to write horizontally. But actually, I think given like the aspect ratio of this display, I will probably end up using it horizontally like this. Um, and because sort of the the processing in order to render the display into the buffer and then write it afterwards is hidden, is it's kind of masked by the fact that this is, um, here, let me shut this off for a second, that this is not a very fast display to begin with. Um, as I said, refreshes take about two seconds-ish. Uh, one thing I do a full screen refresh, even if I, if I change a small part of the display, but there actually is a function in the, um, the controller, um, hardware to do kind of what, what is called like a partial refresh, I guess you could say, uh, where it'll just change whatever you're, you're writing to the display. Um, I have not implemented that yet. I actually have tested that on this controller on this uh, display and that works perfectly fine. So I, I don't see a reason why it wouldn't work for this. Additionally, you can, the library that I use, I borrowed, uh, as I mentioned, some of the WaveShare uh, software, basically. Well, just the initialization and I um, borrowed the initialization for the, um, the lookup table. And what, what the LUT, the lookup table does for this display is it tells it kind of what the timing and the voltages to switch all the pixels should be. And I'm, I'm, I'm storing that as a constant array and I'm, I'm calling that basically at, during the initialization. And you can actually change those values and WaveShare provides values that allow like a 16, uh, you know, four bit, uh, 16 level grayscale. So it would actually be fairly easy to implement this grayscale functionality. I just have it full on or full off. Uh, so it's just one bit, either black or white, but you can definitely do different shades of grays uh, if you wanted to. That wouldn't be too hard to implement. And yeah, and there's a couple of little bugs, uh, certain things, um, like I think the bitmap mode, depending on the resolution, the size of the bitmap, it can screw up. Um, I think there's some edge cases I haven't checked out, so there's some... Um, bugs involving glitches when you try to draw certain size uh, bitmaps. Uh, it might be memory related, it might be, you know, my transform function is doing something wrong for corner cases, like I just said. So anyway, I got to debug this, this isn't perfect. It, it works great for text, uh, for images is kind of a little glitchy as, as of yet. So I still got to fix that. And I want to implement uh, integer bitmap scaling so that even though this text is you know, at its base, I, I believe this is like 14 uh, bits tall. I want to have uh, integer scaling so I can double it or triple or quadruple to make, so I don't have to store different size versions of the same uh, font in memory. I can just uh, on the fly scale them and make the text bigger or smaller as I'd like. Uh, so that's something that I still got to implement. I don't think that'll be too hard. Uh, and as I said, I bought a bunch of these uh, serial flash SPI chips 
And so I want to actually store like all bitmap images and fonts on SPI flash and then have this chip uh, load from external memory so that I can free up flash um, on whatever your host controller is. Uh, that way also I can actually add full like 400 by 300 grayscale images stored externally in flash and um, it won't eat up all your memory basically and you just load it externally and it just grabs the data and then draws it to the, the display. So these are these are incoming. This is going to take a little while. I'm just doing this in my free time for fun. I know that there are already libraries like I could have just borrowed WaveShare's library and all that or I, I, there are other like open source libraries available as well uh, but I just wanted to be able to do this myself and it, I actually learned a lot about um, like image tile manipulation and and all that kind of stuff and debugging this to get this to work uh, so yeah anyway um, if you guys are interested I did have to make one little bodge and um, that's just because I'm not using, I, I didn't want to waste an extra wire for the reset. So I'm just tying it high. So it's, you reset basically by uh, power cycling the screen using GPIO. But anyway, other than that, um, it requires a busy signal. Um, so whenever the display is updating, you shouldn't be writing data to it. So that busy signal prevents my main controller from writing to the display when it's busy. Uh, so it'll have to wait till it's done updating the display. There's a data or uh, command pin, DC. Uh, chip select, which is just standard SPI chip select. Um, there's uh, serial clock and serial data. And finally, yeah, VCC and ground. And this display, it does have a level shifter. So natively, these displays are 3.3 uh, volts, uh, like this guy can only there's no level shifter on here so this has to be run at 3.3 if you try to run it at 5 it'll damage the screen this guy because it has a level shifter you can actually run this at 5 volts um, I have it running at 3 um, just so I don't actually accidentally unplug this plug the other screen and blow that up <laughs> but um, yeah I could easily run this off 5 volts and this will run just fine off of that but yeah, anyway, uh, this was fairly simple. Um, you can actually switch a, a jumper here to um, use three line SPI instead of four line. I'm using four line where data and clock is a separate pin as opposed to a, a you know, ninth bit. Um, but that would be easy enough to switch in software if I wanted to free up an extra wire, um, an extra GPIO. But anyway, yeah. Um, everything this worked fantastic so I, I can't wait I have a couple ideas of what I want to do with this um, because the display is just so sharp and it looks so good <laughs> and now I want to get larger EPDs and they even have seven color uh, electronic paper displays now so I really want to play around with those so I'm just starting to get into this and um, writing the library for this has given me even more of an appreciation of how these displays work. So that's really cool. Anyway, um, I've rambled on for quite a while. So I just wanted to say thanks for being good for uh, sending this in for not really review, just for me to play around with because I've been meaning to for a very long time um, get into, you know, uh, e-paper displays and using them for projects uh, because they're very well suited towards low energy uh, projects where you have a battery that'll last months or years and you only wake up the controller to uh, write to the display and then everything goes to sleep afterwards and just barely consumes power. So yeah, I can think of quite a few things from like weather displays that connect over Wi-Fi and will show you a forecast to just like a simple clock would be awesome for this. Just instead of having to have it always plugged into USB, have it, uh, you know, only write to the time, uh, you know, once a minute or once every five minutes, something like that. And I could have some really neat clock faces or like, you know, word clock implemented on this. Pretty much the sky's the limit. So anyway, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry I rambled on for so long. But yeah, if you are interested in picking up one of these, and I definitely, um, definitely suggest getting one of these to play around with if you do anything Arduino or programming related, this is definitely something that you want to play around with it's just so cool it's not even plugged in now and it's keeping the image uh so yeah anyway um i will have links down below to the uh, sales page where you can pick this guy up like i said it's only 30 bucks ish and i believe that might include free shipping as well 
So don't quote me on that. But yeah, anyway, um, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.